Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, I don't know how I got to 13 there. Hmm. We're going to read verses 13 through 20. Beginning at verse 13, the Bible says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By, by his, his knowledge, knowledge the depths, depths are broken, are broken up, up, and, and the, the clouds, clouds drop, drop down, down the, dew. the dew. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this privilege that we've shared together. Lord, from the start of this service, when we come into your presence, somehow you feel okay to dwell in our midst, and we are very grateful for you, Lord God, tabernacling with us. Thank you so much for just being with us, Lord. We thank you, God. When Moses says, if your presence don't go, then we, we, we're not going. God, we realize that your presence is what we need. Hallelujah. That, that divine accompaniment, we thank you. Lord, bless now the word. Know that uh, the TV audience is, Lord, I ask that somebody will hear the word of God. And lives be affected by it in a positive way. Thank you now, Lord God. Uh, receive your glory as we minister. And let strength come from you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Wisdom. Wisdom, that's what the Lord seemed to impress upon me. Uh, wisdom. I've, I've read some of these chapters quite a few times and uh, really trying to grasp. And I realize that Jesus Christ has made unto us wisdom. So I guess if you look at, look at it like this, it would be to strive to be perfectly yielding to God. Seeing that the spirit of wisdom is in us, right? Uh, Christ is our wisdom. So, but here, uh, the 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 proverb says here, "Happy is the man that findeth wisdom." He seemed to imply that there's a searching. There's a striving to attain wisdom. And, but I thought about, I, I thought about a life that's under divine control. A life that's under divine control is a life of wisdom. And as I was looking into it more carefully, that's a part of what it seemed to imply. Happy is the man, fortunate, blessed and prosperous, well off. That's what that term means in the Greek, in the Hebrew. Is the man that findeth wisdom. If you look at chapter 2, verse 1. He said, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding. If you cry out through knowledge, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge 
of God. Chapter 3, verse 1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding, right? Chapter 5, verse 1 says, My son, attend to my wisdom and bow your ear to my understanding. So there's, there's, there's a real plea. And it goes on up even through chapter 7, giving us the encouragement to remember and seek after, search for God's wisdom. And so he placed it on my heart to meditate on, think about, and share with the body of Christ. Wisdom, according to Webster, has to do with soundness of an action or decision having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, wisdom. And one person said wisdom is the ability to carry out knowledge, the ability to execute knowledge, wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. <laughs> now, if, as, as we... Look at Proverbs 4, 7. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, do what? Get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. And it, so it gives them the benefits of such. The benefits are just many. And so as I read through that, it makes me want to grow in wisdom. Because there's so much there. If wisdom is the key thing, soundness of judgment and how to carry out knowledge and uh, make wise decisions, it, it's, uh, it's something that we are desiring. So this is something that I believe the Lord lays on my heart to talk about. And then he, the writer here talks and he says, uh, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. So wisdom, again, or wealth is personified. Is wisdom, he said, her, attain her, get, uh, uh, gain her. And then for well, the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain of it is to find gold. She is more precious than rubies, and get this, and all the things you can desire are not to be compared to her. her. Think for a minute, pause for a moment. What is your greatest desire? What is your greatest desire? Just ponder. Is it God's best? Is it God's wisdom? Is it more understanding? So the writer says, all the things that we can desire cannot compare to the fruit and the benefits of wisdom. I don't know about you, but it makes me want to Gain some wisdom. So, uh, as I thought about the James, in, we're going to turn there uh, sometime in the future, but uh, in a few minutes, but not right now. Talks about wisdom, and wisdom's character. Verse 17, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are. What happens if someone steps on your toe? 
Would you apply wisdom? If they said nothing to you, if they didn't give, offer some wisdom, if they didn't say, oh, please, excuse me, I'm so sorry. If they said that, then you're okay, right? But what if they stepped on your toe and you look around at them and they just act like, so what? It gives a different response, doesn't it? So the wisdom of, on the person's part that stepped on somebody's toe would be, please excuse me, right? So there's a way to apply wisdom that makes a difference. And the writer here in Proverbs is telling us something here. I want you to follow with me now because this is when the Lord was speaking to our hearts. And uh, during the week, he was talking to me about things like uh, mid, early in the morning. And so I says, okay, that's God. I jumped up and got me a pad and started writing. And before I would forget the thought that he, I heard him saying, and then uh, I went to lay back down. I says, if he continues to speak, I'm going to have my pad here nearby. And sure enough, he said a few other things and. So I jumped back up and wrote down. But I want you to hear this. Now, this is one of the things that the Holy Spirit said. God's truths are timeless and his laws are universal. All right. You say, well, so what? What does that mean for me? What it means is. They work for anyone who applies them. God's laws are universal. They will work for anyone that applies the laws, right? So now let's go back to wisdom. Wisdom is the key thing in life. So the more I learn to operate in wisdom, the better life will be for me. Are, are you hearing me? All right, so. And then the Bible says in Joshua, because wisdom, you, we can find wisdom as we look into God's word, right? There's wisdom in the word of God. So I, as I look in the book of Joshua, when Moses left the scene, then the Bible points out that Joshua took over and God began to speak to Joshua some things that was very important if he was going to conquer, right? Trying to get. And so he says here in Joshua 1, verse 6. No, verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the left hand or to, uh, for, I'm sorry, for, to the right hand or to the left. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Everybody with me? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then. Somebody say then. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then, somebody say then. Thou shalt have good success. Or somebody says then you will be able to do wisely. Wisely. Wisdom. Wisdom. We need wisdom in life. Over the years he certainly talked to me a lot about uh, attaining wisdom. Uh <clears throat> 
Then the Holy Spirit said, there are many things that grab us. The stuff out here today, there's so much going on in our world today. Not to mention technology, cell phones, and a whole lot of other things, right? There are so many things that grab us so that we find ourselves having to carefully select the wisest things. So, uh, so he says, happy is the man in the midst of all that's going on in the world, in the universe, that findeth wisdom. It's the key in life. It's the principal thing. All right, so with all these things going on in our world, with all these things vying for our attention, there is a need to tap into the things that's going to mean more to you and I, individually and collectively, right? Somebody say wisdom. So, uh, it's important to look at the value here that's mentioned here in uh, in the book of Proverbs, he says, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Is anybody hearing me? Then she says, she's more precious than rubies. All the things you can desire are not to be compared to her. Then he goes on and says, verse 16, length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, what? Riches and honor. This is just a couple of, of benefits. Now, you read through these chapters here and you'll see a lot of uh, benefits there of having and attaining wisdom. How many want to live a long time? How many want to live a long time and have a live in peace? It's one thing to live. There a lot. Of, there's quite a few people living a long time, but many of them are not living in peace. There's turmoil. There's 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 confusion, frustration. There's vexation. There's a lot of things going on. But but it's another thing to to live a long time and live in peace. That's what the Bible promises us: one that walks in wisdom. But he reminded me that things are pretty much like they were in the days of Noah. And as you look in the days of Noah, there were not too many that were really, really tapping in to the understanding of the times that they were living in. They all were doing their thing. And, but in the midst of it, the Bible says God found Noah, a man, hallelujah, that were seeking after him in the midst of all the things that were grabbing their attention. There was a man called Noah that found grace in the eyes of the Almighty. And Jesus said in his word, as it was, are you hearing me? In the days of Noah, so shall it be when the coming of the Son of Man come, the closer we approach that time, the more you're going to see the things that are happening repeated again. There's so much going on and darkness will be so pervasive. There's so many things that are going to challenge our faith and our lives. But as we go back to the word of God and understand that that's the framework, the foundation, hallelujah, to build on, then we are going to be able to stand in the midst of everything that's going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wisdom. Tapping into the value of God in his word. Hallelujah. All time spent with God is not wasted time. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. He said there's so many things that grab us. I remember, I remember before I was, God gave me a chance to learn the value of what's valuable in life. I, I had every good intention. I'd get up and said, okay, I'm going to pray. And I'd get up and then all the things that came to my mind so fast. Before I knew it, I was doing everything else but praying. And the day was far spent. And sadly, I said, wow, I'll try it again tomorrow. That went on for a long time. And finally, I remember one time, got up with every good intention, going to spend some time with the Lord. And just like clockwork, here comes the devil. You need to do this. You need to do that. Before I caught what was going on, I would run and do that. And right when I got almost done, he would say, you need to get this done. So then I would go and try to get that done. And right when I got almost finished, he would say, you need to do this. And finally, I caught it. I said, no. <laughs> but he had me going and I didn't understand just because I wanted to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you don't discern the forces in our world today, you'll be obeying them thinking you're obeying God. You got to listen to me today. Hallelujah. For the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You got to tune in. Isn't that right? The God. They'll have you going. And if they can have their way, they'll never let you go into the presence of God because they know that that's where your peace is. That's where your joy is coming. That's where your victory is coming. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I tell you this story, I've told it to many before, but it's appropriate still. Remember years ago, my wife and I needed to spend time in studying the word together and so Finally made a decision. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Wednesday evening or Thursday evening, this is what we're going to do. We're going to sit down. We're going to take time and spend the word together. Had a neighbor across the street. Never set foot in our house. <laughs> About 10 minutes before the time, somebody knocks on the door. I said, how y'all doing? We just wanted to come over and spend some fellowship. I was like, uh-uh, not now. <laughs> But I'm saying that when you purpose, this is for somebody, when you purpose in your heart that you're going to draw close to God, you need to be aware of the forces that are invisible that are going to fight you and to stand in your way and give you a justifiable reason for doing so. When the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. And we must discern the times we're living in. One of the things that God made me so acutely aware of, and that is this, I need my prayer warriors praying. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, I need my intercessors praying. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not to, when you can get a chance to, you know. It's, see, we're talking kingdom stuff now. Yeah. We must understand the forces that will keep you from doing that. If they can't stop you that way, they'll try and load you with concerns. And you'll try to carry that yourself. You can't do it. You need God's help. Amen. These are times we're living in. So 
He said, there are many things that grab us. Let's pay attention to the things that are grabbing us. Hallelujah. You see, because we're pilgrims and strangers. Isn't that right? And then what God said? Pilgrims and strangers on the earth. So join us here. This world is not our home. And so we don't want to be uncomfortable when we get to heaven. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Heaven is something. It's a wonderful place. So we're aiming that. Being pilgrims and strangers. All right. Moving right along. Now this is what I want you to hold your, uh, buckle your seatbelt. No, nobody run out. The Lord said that he said many people are where they are because of their words. Many people are where they are, he said, because of their words. Not understanding how life is. Not understanding the, the principles. Now remember, go back to what God says. His truths are timeless and his, his, his laws are universal, right? They work for anybody to get a hold of them. Are you with me? All right, so our, our, our aim is to get a hold of the truth so that it'll set us free and so that it'll accomplish the goal of God. Isn't that right? All right, now, the Bible says death and life is in the power of what? Look at your neighbor and say, what you say is very important. So now look at, look at this now. When I understand that death and life lies right in the power of my speech or my tongue, then that means I've got to study to be quiet. Why? Because uh, I can be seeing something that will bind me up years ahead and not understanding that it was things that I said that, that, that simply interfered with what God had for me. So now uh, I, I need to discern it so that uh, I can make the change there. Whatever God wants me to do, whatever he says, whatever he promises, then what I want to do, my, I want to line up with what he's saying. Isn't that right? Um, I can't look at situations, situations and notice not so. But I said, no, no, God said that's what's going to happen. So God said that's what's going to happen. So it's got to happen because God said that's what's going to happen. And right? I'm going to line up with God. I'm going to say what he said. But if I say something contradictory, contrary to what God said, then it's going to interfere. It's going to interfere with what God is saying. God told Joshua, if you meditate on my law, this book will become your speech. I like tell you what I'm saying. And God guarantees success when he says what God says. Y'all ain't hearing me today. I told you about the time that I was telling about this old car sitting in front of the house. All I was doing was complaining about that old car. I didn't understand that I was keeping that old car there by the way I was speaking. I didn't, I didn't know that. Finally, I guess God had mercy on me and said, son, if you'll just say, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to do this and so. I'm going to get this car fixed. Do you not know very shortly afterward, after I changed my words, after I changed my words, that car got fixed so fast. And there's been other instances where God was teaching me to show me in, 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 in this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. As people of God, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Jesus was very careful about what he said because he understood that what I say is going to affect something. So I look at his life. I look at let me, let, me, let me find that. Let me tell you what he said. Now, we ain't going to stay there, so I want you to just, don't nobody run around. But he said, complaining when we don't understand. Now, may I submit to you that I've been guilty of that at times? 
But I, but I hope this will help somebody. Just because we don't understand, it doesn't give us, give us room to complain. If I understood everything, then I probably needed to be in a different place. But I don't understand everything. That's why I trust, supposed to trust in the Lord with and lean not to. See, now, now the Lord said these truths are timeless and the laws are universal. Now, if, I hope you follow me. Because if I don't understand that, I can love God, but I don't understand how his kingdom works. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? It's important that you understand. In other words, if God says, you can have what you say, then I can have what I say. What I don't want to do is say what I don't want. Is that right? <laughs> Man, I'm having such a hard time. Is that what you want? If not, don't say it. I've just released with my words a hard time. Y'all got to hear what I'm trying to say. I, I know he gave this to me. It's like God said, now look, this is your time of blessings. But you got to agree with me now. You, you, you can't just, I can't change my laws. I can't change my laws. They're universal. They work for anybody. The old Joe that ain't really serving the Lord a whole lot. He says, oh, things are going to change. I believe. I believe God cares for me just like he does. And next thing you know, old Joe's things start happening for old Joe that, 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 that wouldn't happen for me. And I'm sitting here. I, I said, I'm a righteous person, but I'm saying all the wrong things. Say, God, what's going on in my life here? God said, you've got to learn the principles of the kingdom. They'll work for anybody. The laws of the kingdom. Somebody say, God, I'm always broke. Are you sowing? Are you sowing? You can't sow consistently and be broke. It does not work because God will honor his word. I'm talking to somebody here today. God honors his word. Glory to God. Happy is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners. Sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be. Glory to God. Like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season and in his old age. His leaf will not wither. Hallelujah. And whatsoever he do shall prosper. I want you to know I feel better today than I felt 10 years ago. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I have his word for an assurance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at your neighbors. And neighbor, you ain't got to worry about nobody keeping you from prospering. But look into that word. Let it be a part of you now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I looked at Psalms 1 and it didn't have any name on it but blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That means any man that will look into the perfect law of God you can prosper against all the odds you can prosper because his word shall not return to him void. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. I want you to say, 
If you were into something that's struggling and holding you back, and if you feel stuck, you say, I'm coming out. With the help of my God, I'm coming out. Um, and there's no change that's going to hold me back. Uh, because if God be for me, he's greater than anybody that's against me. Hallelujah. Say it, somebody. Say it, somebody. Watch God work for you. Watch God bring you out. Um, watch him wake up on your behalf. Watch God work for you. God is a great God um, and he can do what nobody else uh, can ever do. Uh, speak it somebody. Speak it somebody. Say it with your mouth. Uh, say it with your mouth. Uh, watch God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't sing the devil's song. Say what God says. Say, my God. God is able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, but all that I can ask or think. Hallelujah. 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 He's working on our behalf. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. God says, you don't want us to complain about things we don't understand. I want us to complain about things that he allowed to come our way. Hallelujah. Sometimes God allows things so that he can show his mighty power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's like the devil says, no, I ain't nothing coming out of this shit because they don't even believe what, what you're saying. But God says, I know my servants. I, I, I know. I know what they're going to do. And that's why I allowed them to go through. Because just like Job said, after I've been tried. Oh, my God. After I've been tried, I am coming forth as pure gold. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what Job was saying? He's saying, all this trial can do to me is make me better. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ooh, glory, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we don't understand but what the Lord is looking for us is to keep our integrity. God is big on integrity. Uh, it wasn't so much as he, and somebody said, boy, why would God let Job go through this here? God wanted to show them the principalities and powers of I'm an upright men. You know, he's not moved by situation. He understands something about me. So he took him through and so on to him. Made it ever mad. He, he took him, uh, destroyed every part of his business. And Job fell down and worshiped. Good Lord. What? Fell down and worshiped. Uh, how, how many feel like worshiping when uh, maybe your car get taken or maybe, maybe you get an eviction notice? How, how many falls down and worship God? And God is looking for integrity, trying to build some integrity in our lives. Anybody can praise God when things are going well. That ain't no testimony, isn't that right? <laughs> that ain't no testimony. You can get an old drunk and do that. But you cannot get, hallelujah, someone to praise God when things are frustrating them. God has to make this in our lives. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, he's still working on me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
and want to say God is good. Try to make us question God's love and care. It was a simple situation with Martha. Martha, she trying to serve, do, do something for Jesus. And then when Mary was there wanting to find out about this Jesus, Lord, 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 come on now, you make her help me. How can you let her just sit there in your presence? Then I'm working like a, like a slave. And after all, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> The Lord could have, you know, I know she looked at the Lord and said, Lord, Lord say, okay, uh, uh, Mary, come on now. Help your sister. But he didn't say that, did he? He had to call Martha down, Martha. Martha. You care no about this little stuff. But Mary chose the good part. And that part is lasting. That part won't be taken away. Are you working for temporary stuff? Are you putting your time and investment in temporary stuff that won't last? And then there was others that uh, didn't understand. Remember when the disciples were on the boat? They didn't understand. Master, Come on now, wake up. How you, how you gonna sleep like this? Man, our lives are at stake. You, you, man, you can't, this ain't no time to sleep. He woke up. Mm. Okay, he said, just, just peace, be still. He said, well, what, what y'all so fearful about, man? To them, it was a time to be afraid. Isn't that right? <laughs> But when you're with Jesus, you don't need to be afraid. Hallelujah. But they complained because they didn't understand. Matthew, don't you care? Don't you care? How many times you've been in a situation, you look up to the Lord, Lord, don't you care? Now, I know I'm reading somebody's mail here today because the Lord done told me. I don't know. Don't you care, the Lord? He had to get me that about that <laughs> more than one time. <laughs> you know, tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> He's like, son. And this is what the Lord said. God says, that uh, let me make sure I get that word, that thing right. He said, his deeds are manifest that we might get to know God better. His works are manifest so that we might get to know God better. Because once we get to know God better, we don't question him at every junction. Can I take you back to Israel in the wilderness? Now God told them what he was going to do, right? So they were to keep focus on what God had said. Anybody with me? But what happened was every junction, they questioned not, not only Moses, but they questioned God's wisdom or his love for them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every junction, every Time they ran into a problem that they 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 didn't understand. And what I want you to understand is God doesn't change. Amen. We can look into that Old Testament and we can find truths to help us in this day and time. When you begin to see that God's not happy when we complain a lot, uh, even when we don't understand. So what we have to do now is get to know God better through looking at the word, the acts of God. And, uh, you know, look how God dealt with people in the past. Look how he, he brought Job out. Look how he brought Joseph out. The list goes on. Look at the end of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody, are you hear what I'm saying? That the Lord won't leave you in that triumph. God may be building something in you for the future. Isn't that right? Um, 
God may 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 gonna do something like He did Joseph on a smaller scale or maybe on a larger scale, but He needs that integrity. He needs that integrity to be put in pact. He know He needs to know that we're not gonna jump ship. We're not gonna turn with our enemy against Him when we don't like things. Y'all, y'all gotta hear what I'm saying. God's gotta work that out of us. If he don't work it out of us, we can embarrass him at the wrong time. And sometimes when God is working, we may not understand it. But you've got to know when you see the works of God from Genesis to Revelation, see the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. God is faithful. Can I say something if you don't? Don't be bothered by it. The easiest place in the world to worship and to give praise is when we come together. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying? If a man can't praise in this atmosphere, if you can't praise in this atmosphere when the glory of his presence is here, not too good. You sure are not going to praise him when you get back home. Because this atmosphere is five times better than your home. You say, what are you talking about? Are you trying? No, I'm telling you the truth. If you don't believe it, when you get back home, see if that glory is here so that you can just worship God. What are you trying to say, Brother Herring? I'm trying to say God's trying to teach us. You can bring a presence in the home. But the principle we must learn. Isn't that right? James talked about it. Paul talked about it. Peter talked about it. Jesus talked about it. It's real. We praise. We worship. Because of who he is. No, 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 no. Not because of what he's doing for us. Because he is deserving of all of my praise. Hallelujah. He's deserving of all of my praise. And once I grasp that, that even when I don't understand. Then another thing the Lord says, sometimes people come, we complain because we don't like someone's character. You know how it is. I don't know why that, that brother, I, that sister, you know, God, I wish you'd do something. But we're complaining. And the Lord says, we still have to focus when we don't understand. Guess what he told me? He used to, God told me something years ago. He said, he, he said you, you don't trust me, son. I said, well, uh, why? Why don't I trust you? He said, because of unreliable people. He said, you look at people because they confess Christ. And if they're not reliable, then you attribute that to me. I said, oh my God, Jesus, help me. We can't look at people's character and attitude and get upset with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People are people. And God is God. Isn't that right? Come on, let's thank him. Hallelujah. <laughs> and these are some things that he was sharing and he also shared, said share with the body. Now, the problem, he said, he said, mad at God. Don't let anybody run out yet. I ain't quite finished. He said, the problem is mad with God. What do you mean mad with God? Okay, go with me for a minute. If anybody can fix my situation, is God. Amen. Right? So he promised that if we call on him, he would help us, right? 
So now if I call on him for 10 or 15 years about the same problem and he doesn't do anything? So we start to examine a lot of things, right? And then if we examine and can't come up with too much, then we start to getting upset with God. Now, don't throw in the stones. I'm just trying to share what God's here. Not everybody, but some of us are mad with God. And the Lord wants to help us. No, oh, he's he not, he not mad with us. I mean, he, he understands human frailties. But he does want us to acknowledge it and come for his help. That's what he wants. So when you're mad with God, when things don't go right, the heart teaches the mouth. Are you with me? Whatever is in my heart, if it's good, it will cause me to speak right in the midst of situations that I don't understand. But if there are things in my heart like anger, unforgiveness, then when I get confronted with some things that vex me or frustrate, then I'm going to get mad at God and I'm going to say things that's directed at him. I may not directly say, God, I'm angry with you. But what I say starts to be pointed and directed at God. And so God says, I'm not mad. I want to help. Because I can help you. He's a good God. <laughs> So now if the heart, since the heart teaches the mouth, we that want the change, we must allow him to doctor on our hearts, right? All right, so now, bringing it down to conclusion, there is divine comfort, not only divine control, our lives with wisdom under the sway and the power of the almighty God. We refrain from saying things that we shouldn't say. We try and live a life that's acceptable with God. We try and line our lives up with what is pleasing and acceptable to God. And that life under divine control is going to be a blessing and an instrument of God's praise. There also is divine comfort to a people in pain. Hallelujah. Wisdom. God works wisdom in us. We go through a lot sometime in order for him to work that wisdom in us, right? Uh, that 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 that, that uh, thing, that sense of I know I, I gotta let Johnny go, I gotta let Sally go. I I, I realize I, I can't can't uh, uh, keep that in my heart. It'll be like a cancer inside of me. So I, 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 I in order to walk in understanding and wisdom and knowledge, I gotta let it go. I release it to, to God because I want to go forward. Are you with me? I'm walking in wisdom. I'm, my hand, my life is under God's sway, under His power, under, under His control. Now and 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 there's sometimes I may feel like I want to say something, but I can't can't say it because I realize the power of words. Now I'm, I'm, I'm holding my, my peace when uh, uh, in the natural part I want, want to say something because my hand, my life is under the hand of God. Wisdom. Before I go on to this point of divine come to turn to James chapter 3 right fast. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 verse 13 says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conduct, a good life, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, boast not, glory not, and lie not against truth, right? Cause this wisdom descends not from above. Everybody with me? But is earthly, sensual, devilish. 
because of all who are envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work. Now look at here. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Isn't that right? So this is the wisdom that comes from above. It's a gentleness. And, 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 and that wisdom is so awesome until it helps to build relationships. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Walking in that wisdom. Hallelujah. Okay. So uh, divine wisdom is, is, is that which gives us that sense of uh, good judgment and equity. Being able to discern the inner qualities. Insight. God gives that. Comfort. Healing. From whatever needs healing. Healing that in the broken places of our lives. Healing from pain and sorrow. Healing that comes from God. And that healing that comes from God is so precious. It's so reassuring. It's so affirming. It is so good. God desires and he delights in pouring that wisdom upon us. Restoring our souls. Restoring our souls. God want to bring that comfort even today. Many have gone through, like I said, so many things and we face things in this life because that's the nature of light and darkness. But then we move on from the divine comfort. We're going to be praying shortly and that God will bring comfort and healing. And then the last point is this divine purpose. He moves us from the state that we're in so that we will move in divine purpose. God has a goal in mind. He has a goal in mind. God does not want us to just get fat on his word. He wants us to be instruments of his glory. Now is the right time. I don't want to say this to the young ministers that's been credentialed here. This is, as I was reading this gentleman's book, Dr. Salyu, three things came to me. One was, tell the ministers to begin praying for a territory and believe God that he will send you to be a blessing to that territory. We know that God said he's going to begin to launch others forth. And that's what I felt him saying one thing. Tell the ministers to begin began to believe God for a territory concerning his kingdom. And as he speak to you, get with your leader. And we're going to do some intense last minute training for you to take that territory. It's not business as usual. It's God's divine purpose. So I'm telling the leaders here, the ministers here, Begin to talk to God. Begin to pray, God, where you want me? Where you want me to, where, what harvest, where you want me to begin to minister at? And some of you, God is going to speak to you. I remember the day I was with the other church. We went to a inner city conference. And the man of God was preaching with such power and fervor. And right in the midst of it, he says, Young man, he said, you find a city and you believe God for that city, that God will take you there. That thing gripped my heart and he dropped Norfolk in my heart just like that. 
It wasn't long before here we come to Norfolk. But God wants to do something now at this point. There's some of us right now, and God's going to speak to you. How you know, Brother Harry? Because that's what he gave me. He's going to speak to somebody here. He's going to begin to send you to new territory. And God is going to be glorified in your life. Got to get out of the nest now. Isn't that right? Like the Lord says, I've taught you. I've poured into your life. And now you must give out on a different basis. There's some ministers here. God wants you to begin to believe him for new territory. He'll speak to you. Another thing God said is to talk to tell the talk to people about integrity. I've tried to incorporate that in the word today. Integrity is very, very important in the day and time that we're living in. We've got to live what we preach. We've got to live what we teach. Isn't that right? Try to trust God for all the inconsistencies in our lives. That's what God is about. I remember a person there that was highly anointed and God told me, he said, there's some inconsistencies about this life. Sometimes when God is working, you don't know what he's doing. But spend time with God. He's just. He's fair. He's very good. Let him address the inconsistencies. Let him address the things that he wants to address. It only makes us better. It only makes us better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 61 concerning divine purposes, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me, proclaim liberty to the captives, covering of sight to the blind. And he goes on to preach, to proclaim the acceptable year of God. Comfort all that mourn, hallelujah. To repair the old waste places. Isn't that what he said? Hallelujah, there's purpose. See, God don't just heal us and leave us. He heals us so that we can be effective in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I'm concluding with 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Remember now, said, watch over your mouth. Isn't that right? Because we want to go places with God. We want to do things. We want to be instruments in his hands in a greater way. All right. Verse Peter 5. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, you're not in it by yourself. Verse 10, but the God, I want you to get this, but the God of all grace, who hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. After you've suffered a while, isn't it right? Depending on when the Lord says that's enough, isn't that right? After you've suffered a while, make you what? Perfect. And that word here in the Greek means to adjust you. Yo, 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 you, you, you. I think it adjusts our thinking. You, you know, we have a certain way of thinking sometimes. And, and in order for us to go forward, that thinking has to be adjusted. There's some that, and it also means putting parts into the right relationship and connection. Sometimes, you know, you can, you can be in a body, but 
you know, I don't like, I don't like that person. You won't say it, but you know, inside, I ain't got time for that person. But they're in the body. No, no, that, that I can't deal with. You know, you know that attitude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, 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 no. So, God has to fit us in his body so that you will submit to him with what he wants. You see, there are many bricks, but all of them can't be used. I told you when I was at this building place and they had stacks of a thousand bricks on the side, well, they were nice bricks, but they hadn't been worked in. Now, until they get worked in, listen to me carefully. They are beautiful, but they can't accomplish anything. You've got to hear what I'm trying to tell you. They're beautiful and they're bricks. But until they allow God to fit them in, in the building, are you hearing what I'm saying? Into God's building, into his body, into his work. Then they remain just a brick looking good. So this is what God is doing. In order for me to work with my brother or my sister, whatever is abrasive in me or them, it's got to go. Do you know what I'm saying? If I can't work with Joe, Sally, it ain't Joe, it's me. No, you, 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 you got to hear what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not trying to be funny. God has to fit us in, in his body. Before he pour his glory in the body like he want to. Hallelujah. What do you mean by that? He's bringing us into unity. He said he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry until we all come to the unity of the faith, understanding that the eyes need the hands and the hand needs the nose and the nose need the fingers and the fingers need the toes. We, we, we need each other. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to say? Sometimes we, we don't understand if you don't believe you step on your toe or let somebody step on your toe or let somebody bend your finger back. This whole body is going to say, ouch, through the mouth. Am I right? Am I right? So we got to allow God to fit us in the body. When we allow God, that means humility. It means humility. Humility and wisdom goes hand in hand. Humility and wisdom goes hand in hand. You can't walk in wisdom and then walk in pride. What are you saying, Brother Harry? I'm saying God is talking to us, saints. He's talking to us. We want to hear what he has to say. After you've suffered a while, God do the adjustments, putting parts into right relationship and connection. He fit us together. Then not only make you perfect, but he says establish it. That's bringing us into unity. Then he says the third thing is strengthen you. Confirm you in spiritual power. My God. Shanda. Glory to God. And then he said settle you. Put you on the right foundation. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Isn't that right? No more I but Christ. Hallelujah. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Father, we thank you. 
We give your name to glory. We give your name to honor and we thank you because you're good. Lord, we realize that what you're doing today, this is not games that you're playing. You want us, Lord God, where you want us. You want us understanding the nature of your work and the nature of your operation. Forgive us for complaining. Forgive us, oh God, for not understanding uh, when we apply principles that work against us. Forgive us for these things, but help us now to, to, to uh, work these principles with the help of God in our lives that makes for prosperity and peace in the name of Jesus that gives you the go-ahead, gives you the right of way to do what you so long to do by your power and by your grace, Lord God. I thank you because you're faithful, Lord God. I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you now for divine grace in Jesus name come on let's give God some praise